We work with media organizations when we are requested to. So we have worked in the past with Al Jazeera, um, and we also have a partnership with Internews so that we work with them on certain projects. So with crowdsource information in general, um, I think it can be uh, another uh, feed in f with other information that they're collecting for a story. Um, it can provide more context and it can possibly provide some personal stories that come through social media. Um, with the Standby Task Force in particular, uh, we welcome activation requests uh, from any organization, including from media organizations. So in the same way that Al Jazeera activated us to help with their map on uh, the Balkans' cold weather, other organizations could request it. The Standby Task Force has a media monitoring uh, team which is very often where a lot of the journalists that volunteer for us end up working. Um, it's, uh, it's, it, it, it requires a lot of the skills that journalists already have. We also have a verification team, uh, which again would require the kind of skills that a lot of journalists have. So if any journalists want to volunteer for the Standby Task Force, there's a very simple application form on the website and we welcome all those skills. There are some humanitarian organizations that are beginning to use uh, crowdsourced information in a very effective way. Um, I'll give you two examples. Um, UNHCR um, used information uh, processed actually by the Standby Task Force uh, to show where uh, new settlements had been created in Somalia following the drought that led to a lot of famine and used that information to then plan their response in Somalia. Um, so that's a very effective use of crowdsourced information. Um, uh, another example um, is uh, USAID um, is doing some work on poverty alleviation for which they needed a lot of data to be uh, geolocated. Um, and again, they used a crowd of volunteers to geolocate that information and then that's gone into their general preparedness work. Um, so I'm sure there are lots of other examples. I'm, I'm just giving you the ones from the humanitarian world. Um, I feel like the humanitarian world um, is really embracing crowdsourcing now and I'm certainly more familiar with that than with the journalism world. You know, the field I work in um, is peace building. Um, and I have been uh, advocating for a long time that uh, people who work on promoting peace and reducing conflict ne need to start listening to crowdsourced information a lot more. Um, there's a lot of early warning um, systems that uh, use crowdsourced information, but mainly for disaster response, no, it's not so much for responses to conflict. Um, so that's a field that I think could use it more.